Okay, everybody, welcome back to another episode of the Side of Ranch podcast. I'm Mike. And I'm Ben. And Ben, we have a very special guest today, if you want to go ahead and introduce him. Yeah, he is a leading flat earth proponent, attended multiple conferences around the world, and right now has a documentary out right now on Netflix called Behind the Curve. Uh, We'd like to welcome Mark Sargent. How's it going? It's going well. Thank you guys very much for having me. Awesome. Awesome. So basically, Mark, um, we're very curious uh, from your perspective, just to give us an idea of, because the exact date, if I can remember, was it February 10th? 2015 at 3:30 in the morning. Very Does good. I, that 15? that was my was Jerry Maguire moment. Nailed it. Right. So, can you give us a little bit of introspective as to what exactly happened on that morning at that exact moment? At like that, that exact be- moment, I gave up fighting. I, I gave up pushing the globe side of things. I was I was I was hammering on. I was hammering on it, and then. Finally, in the middle of the night, then at that exact moment, I had this moment of clarity where I said, wow, I'm, I'm going about this all wrong. I need to go at it from the, the flat side of things and then put all the responsibility on the globe side. So basically, if you, if you treat it like a court case, I went the other way. I literally just walked over to the other side and played the other attorney. And right. I said, no. No, I, I can't prove the globe. So I, I'm saying prove the globe to me. And that's when and I said, okay, how would I do this? And, and I'd, I'd asked myself a whole bunch of questions over the last nine months leading up to that point. And then I just made my first video. Literally went, sat down, didn't know anything about video editing, just went down and, and um, wrote out some of the best writing I've ever done. I mean, as far as just, you know, knocked all the paragraphs out and then said, okay, well, I might as well narrate it. And so I narrated it and then it's, well, might as well attach some slides to it and then threw it up in the internet, set it to creative commons license and said, you know what? Prove me wrong. And honest to God, did not think anything was going to happen. Didn't turn on comments for the first six months and people started calling me immediately and emailing me and uh, all sorts of people reached out. And that was five years ago. And here we are two books, a documentary, I don't know how many interviews uh, and, and all sorts of fun stuff and just open doors everywhere. Wow, that's yeah. amazing. Um, so when you said that people started contacting you and you started getting in touch with people, how did that go about? Did you have, um, did you start creating a social media page or did no. you have an online community? No, I was an idiot. Uh, I put my <laughs> name and my phone number out there. <laughs> I literally, in, in, the, in the description box, in fact, I even, in the first couple of videos, they said, hey, you want to call me? Call me. Why not? Yeah. I mean, I had done tech support for a number of years, and so, but I knew the trend was already leaning towards texting. You know, people, I was running into kids that were much younger than me that had never picked up a phone in their life. You know, it was always just yeah. text. And so I said, well, yeah, call me. I go, don't text me. I'm not going to answer your text. But if you want to call me, call me. And yeah, yeah. they did. Uh, the, and, or, and I had my email address out there. And so people emailed me and they called me and it was wild. I, I never, never expected the response that I got. And on top of that, there were people that took, because it was Creative Commons license, you know, you, a lot of people don't know this in the YouTube world. There are people that look for free videos, copyright free videos, and they will put them on their site. And there were a couple guys, three guys in particular that rena- that, that compiled, because when you first go into YouTube, you can't even make long videos. You, got, you can only make short videos. Yeah. And they had compiled all the clues into one and they called it a movie. And then, and, and people kept emailing me and I thought it was a, a, a figure of speech thing. It's like, oh yeah, I loved your movie. I was going, wow, the clues are only like 12 minutes each. I don't know why you're calling it a movie. And then yeah. finally I just caved in. I said, hey, what are you watching exactly? Can you send me a link? And they were yeah. sending me links to these different people. And these, these movies had millions of hits. And uh, they're still out there even today. That's where most of the early response came from. It wasn't from my channel. It was from other people that took the clues and just ran with them. In fact, I missed them because they weren't called Flat Earth Clues. They were called, um, one of them was called Under the Dome Full Documentary, which was weird because Stephen King had, had just released the uh, the Under the Dome series. And then For two sure. guys, one of them called it, um, They Are Hiding God with the Greatest Lie Ever. And They Are Hiding God with the Biggest Lie Ever. And these two guys didn't know each other. But the, <laughs> like they, they stole from each other and it was really, really weird. So yeah, that's that's how the whole thing started. That's so, unreal. so I guess yeah, that's that's awesome. I mean, it, it's anything, listening to the the documentary was it was really interesting too because I I, I, I 
I looked at it from the perspective when we were watching it today as well. When you had like, you had the the flat Earth kind of symbol. You first had it like on your table, then you had the longer one, like the larger one as well, with the dome over top of it. Right. So can you, can you like go into why like you know is that one of your one of your theories as well that there that we are obviously we are enclosed because you. Because you believe as well that we're, we're surrounded by ice. That's correct, right? Yeah, Antarctica. Well, I mean, it's an ice-covered continent. But yeah, yeah. It, it's it's a frozen continent around the yeah. outside. And then we're covered by a dome on top of it. We're basically living in a box. We're living yeah. in a, a building with walls and a floor and a ceiling. And the dome part of it is... is I mean, there's even a layer on top of the dome part. I mean, the, the, the reason why the dome part caught on is because it's an easy thing to remember. You know, snow globe. That's what most people... It's like, oh, it's like a snow globe. It's like, yeah, it's yeah. like a snow globe. Or yeah. if you're older, you remember the Truman Show from 1998, oh, yeah. 1999. Um, and then I go, you know, other people, you know, I say planetarium or terrarium or whatever it is. But it's basically a box. Uh, again, and and it's so the the thing that I didn't mention in the movie was that it's so big that even our best and brightest didn't figure it out until about 1960. And yeah, right. that is that is one of the big things I got to throw out there. It's like no, we had nothing to do with it. Whoever built this place, even we didn't know what it was until about 1960 because our technology. I mean, come on, we haven't even had HD television for 20 years, if that. Mm -hmm. And yeah. so, if you don't find out until 1960, do you tell the public? Do you tell everybody if you don't even figure it out till 1960? And the answer is no. And I've mm -hmm. gone to a bunch of journalists on this. I said, really? You tell them you'd break that story? And they, they their initial response is like, yeah, yeah, I w well, wait a minute. And it's like, yeah, you wouldn't, would you? Because you don't know what it would do to society, which is talked about in so many science fiction novels. Yeah. yeah. Anyway. And, uh, and uh, not, not to interject, but are, Go ahead. Are, you, are you saying with... Um, as of from 19 or actually at the point in 1960 that's when people started realizing that we that you're that you're saying that we're living under a dome is that what you're saying yeah 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 meaning in 1960 the united states and the soviet union in a joint effort pretty much figured out they they knew in 1928 there was something wrong sorry 1926 there was something wrong with the north pole and that's when they rushed out and the united states navy and their their best and youngest admiral just kept hammering the Antarctic for the better part of 30 years up until his death. And it took yeah. him that long. And it was Murphy's law where he goes on <laughs> national television. He says, Oh yeah, that place is going to be the freaking resource explosion. Everyone's going to go out there. We're going to spend the next hundred years there. And then the very next mission, uh, operation deep freeze was when I believe they found it and they found the outer marker at you know, whatever the outer marker was. And <laughs> that's when they sealed it off. Three years later, the Antarctic treaty was ratified and that's it. You can go down there and have your picture taken with some penguins, but no corporation can go down there ever. It's the only unbroken treaty in the history of treaties, which still right. blows me away. No, but I guess uh, another That's question I have is in once you said in 1960, when they went to Antarctica and they found, you said, was it the outer rim they found? Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, meaning if you're looking, so one of the common problems we have with withdrawing the, the whole flat earth model is that people think, oh, it's, you know, it's an asteroid in space or it's the snow globe and the, and the white part in the outer edge is really, really thin. It's like, no, 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 no. Meaning the white part is usually much, much thicker. In fact, I've got some of our, our guys that are bugging me. It's like, yeah, you get, fight, get a model with the white part that's much, much thicker. And it's like, yeah, but it kind of screws up everything and it's, you got to make it a lot bigger. And that's what, so what I'm saying is the Antarctic coastline is just the beginning of how you've got to go thousands of miles inland before you would ever run into this. The, the, the most common mistake people make is they say, oh, well, the Antarctic coastline is the ice wall, like Game of Thrones. It's, it's the end of the world. It's like, no, no, it's, it's not the end of the world. It's, it, the whole Thor Asgard thing did us no favors. It's, <laughs> yeah. it's, it's, there's, no, there's no Night's Watch is what you're saying. No, yeah. there's no cosmic waterfall. Or, I mean, that's, that's also a common question. It's like, how's all the water staying? It's like, oh, God. Are people still referring to those drawings from hundreds of years ago? Yeah. Uh, yeah. But no, the the outer marker w would be thousands of miles inland. Okay. Now, you did somebody discover this? Like, do we have do we have somebody that actually? Did oh God, no! <laughs> you would never tell anybody <laughs> about this. In yeah, fact, yeah. in fact, it was one of those things where people say, "Well, you got to show us a picture of the edge." And I was going, "If I had a picture of the edge, I would be the most famous person ever." <laughs> Right, or, yeah. or dead right. <laughs> one of the two right. yeah, because yeah, yeah, yeah. because people will yeah. also say well why don't you hire a pilot 
and have them just break rank and just head off in the Antarctic. I was going, that's a great idea. Yeah. Super, super great. If you can get a pilot that's suicidal enough to do that, <laughs> even if you yeah. got out there and it's like, wow, look at this glistening, whatever, force field, unified field, whatever it's made out of. And you're looking at this thing, it's going, that's great. Yeah, good luck getting back reporting that. <laughs> Yeah, and, exactly. And in fact, there's a great line because I do believe the media, you know, is a little bit influenced by corporations and government. Um, there's a line from a, a great movie years ago called uh, Three Days of the Condor with uh, Robert Redford about CIA groups attacking each other. And at the end, he, he took his story and he gave it to the New York Times and he told his boss. And it was this spooky moment at the very end and nobody else got it where his, his boss, he goes, yeah, I gave it to him. His boss goes, yeah, how do you know they'll run it? He goes, what are you talking about? I gave it to him. He goes, yeah, but how do you know? Yeah, yeah. It's like, no, the media, you know, the government is very, very careful about what gets out there. So, Right. I'm thinking, though, I, I mean, I'll play devil's advocate. Hypothetically, if you guys had enough money and funding to do that, to hire, like, uh, you know, uh, a pilot to do that, could you theoretically try to fly them to the edge? I, if I had the money, I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't do the Antarctic thing. In fact, I've had several producers that have offered the Antarctic side. And it's like, you, you don't have any idea what the Antarctic Treaty is. One, yeah. there it's, it's, it's a multi-layer treaty where you have to go through, because Antarctica is the only piece of real estate that isn't owned by anybody, yeah. you have to go through a whole bunch of countries and you have to pay a whole bunch of fees. And even if you did head out there, remember the GPS system is United States military. Designed by us, it's all us, which means it would also steer you in the way it would want to go. You'd have to turn off the GPS. What landmarkers would you use? Now, if I had the money, I would um, I would do something a lot cheaper. In fact, I would hire um, somebody to put a 4K ro a 4K camera on the capsule of any rocket that was going to leave Earth orbit. Pointed. I was actually just going to ask you literally about rockets. So, yeah. I mean, this is. I mean, I don't mean to springboard kind of past. No, no, no. You can go ahead. But. We were chatting as well about because I mean you, we know that you're totally into every kind of conspiracy theory. We remember, we remember the the documentary with your mom and you're like she's like, well you know not everything's a conspiracy theory and you were kind of like, well <laughs> and, not and, and not 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 really every good. just you know not everything yeah. is conspiracy and I don't yeah. believe in every conspiracy. I have an opinion on just about yeah. any conspiracy you can think of. So feel okay. free. Um, yeah. But good. The, the question I was going to pose as well because I was saying about the whole the rocket thing is like because if you had conceivably the money. You know, in your opinion, so if you did put something on a rocket, what would happen? If what 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 would be recorded? Oh, if you put something, if if we did put something on a rocket, yeah. Well, one, they wouldn't allow it. It's sort of like the the, the question was, if someone paid for you to go into space and go to the ISS, would you go? I go, yeah, sure, I'd go, but it'd be a nightmare because they would sit me down and they'd say, okay, you have to sign this NDA, and it's like, what's the NDA mean? Well, the NDA means if you say anything, you're going to be up for treason and treason <laughs> isn't court, which I've got to right. clarify, you know, treason yeah. is where they, you know, lock you in a room and throw away the room, that, that sort of thing. Right. Um, but if you put a camera on a 4K thing, they would just throw some technical glitch mm -hmm. if we did it. I mean, it's, it's happened time and time and time again anyway, which is why we're real skeptical, really skeptical of doing it. Every t there's never in the history of space travel has been a camera that has been pointing down at the at the launch pad to where the earth has turned into a nice globe on the way out and then you know it's like in fact the the last one that should have been able to do it was elon musk's car in space they yeah. had three cameras That's... three hd cameras it was going to loop loop and go to mars right and then yeah. it was going loop to loop and then it's like well that's it for the broadcast let's shut it all down it's like what, what are you doing what are you doing you've got you've got production value why would you shut this thing off it's like oh it's just time to shut it off. It's like you didn't have any distortion. It was perfect images. It was the most beautiful thing ever. <laughs> other than the car didn't make any sense because nothing blew up and nothing cracked and nothing spider webbed. But I don't even want to get into that right now. <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll throw some at you. The, the guy from who was the guy that jumped off? Felix Baumgartner. Yeah, so, from so what, Red Bull. So what's that? So what's that then? Explain that to me. Oh my God. Okay, Felix Baumgartner. First off, Mark, I gotta say I love your segues. I love Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Whenever we say it, it's like, oh like, my god, here we go. He already, knew, he already knew who I was talking about before yeah. I even came out. Well, okay, and and I've got a I've got some wonderful video clips. I can, in fact, I'll send you one uh, when I'm done. There's, it's on my channel. I put a, a line on. Normally, I would say when it came to the Felix Baumgartner, I would say just you know fisheye lens, you know, which is known as a peephole lens. Everyone knows when you look out the peephole on your door, your hallway is not curved. 
but the lens makes it look so. No, the the lot. What I do now, everyone's been doing for at least the last two years. When it comes to the Felix Bumgarner Red Bull jump, yeah. is I'll just send you a, a Neil deGrasse Tyson clip where he, oh my God, he finally did us a favor, where he's on stage talking to a crowd and he was really irritated about that jump. And I was really surprised about this because he thought it was scientifically dishonest because the curvature was so exaggerated. Remember, it's only 130,000 feet. And he comes, he, he goes on stage and he was really clear about this. He offered this. It was completely ad-libbed where he says, yeah, he's only, you know, if the earth is, the, you know, he had a beach ball. And he said, he goes, he goes, this, he goes, Felix would have been maybe two millimeters off. He goes, he goes, and they showed this curve. He goes, you wouldn't be able to see the curve from 130,000 feet. And he goes, he goes, you, you know, you can't see the curvature from this beach ball. I'm, I'm trying to be verbatim. He goes, he goes, that stuff is flat. Now that's interesting to me because I've had people swear up and down, swear to me that they have seen the curvature from the Concorde from an airplane, from a balloon, from a mountain, and yes, the beach, all day long. And I, the, the line I put in there, and I'll, again, I'll send you the video, well, while we're doing this, I'll try to send the video, I'll put it in chat. But yep. what I try to tell people, I go, look, it's standard Orwellian stuff, it's conditioning. Um, yep. You guys, you guys are Star Trek Next Gen fans at all? Haven't watched it. Yeah, that's all right. It's not the, Star Trek, but I might have to get into it. That's all right. Uh, so there was a line when Picard was captured once by the Cardassians. Uh, he was being tortured. And they were doing the whole five lights, four lights thing, which was he was saying there's four lights, right? And every time they would like torture him because they said, no, you see five lights. And at the very end of the movie, he was telling Riker, and again, stuff that people miss. He's going, he goes, you know, it wasn't the scariest part. You know, the scariest part wasn't the torture or the pain, everything. He goes, he goes, no, just before you rescued me, I saw five lights. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And so when people say, oh, yeah, they've seen the curvature, and then I show them the Neil deGrasse Tyson clip where he says no civilian has ever seen basically a curvature, it throws them. Because they're, I yeah. go, so, and, and I've had people, you can read the chat box. And you know, people are like, well, Neil's wrong. Neil's wrong. I'm going, really? Because he's the most popular scientist in the world. It's all yeah. he does every day is talk about astrophysics. So right. if he's wrong, then you're going to have to discount a lot of the stuff he says. So yeah, yeah. the Red Bull jump, sorry. There's there's no way. The, the curvature was so okay. severe. And again, you'll see it in the video. I'll drop in for you. The curvature is yeah. so severe that if it was real, and we we you know we pulled it back and extrapolated you know with modeling, and said so the, the, basically the whole world is the size of Arizona. So wow. no. No, no, no. Yeah, and did, uh, in your opinion too, like for for the the time it took, or would you like? Did you notice anything for the time? Like, was it too quick, or was it too slow, or? Oh, when he of, fell, like, like he to Earth, like for well, that. Well, who knows? I mean, the thing was edited to hell anyway. I mean, at least it, at least he was up there. That's the only thing I can say, is yeah. that, that at least he was there. I mean, there's other stuff like with the ISS. We don't believe anything that happens inside the ISS, but with Felix, at least it's like, wow, well, he went up to 130,000 and he jumped. And we've got balloon. In fact, the other thing was we've got bl multiple things of balloon footage of at 120,000 feet, which show it absolutely flat. Yeah. So, and then right. I show, that's what we used to show people. It's like, okay, Red Bull shows this. We show this. Someone is lying. And, it, you know, can't, I don't think it's us because we didn't even send those balloons up. Those were other, other people's balloons or like, or we'll pit them against each other. So when they'll, the, cause Felix, you know, when he jumped, it's like, oh yeah, I saw the curvature. It was great. It's like, oh really? Cause Neil says you didn't. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, yeah. what is it exactly? Right. That kind of kind of segueing back into Neil a little bit, but in the documentary, you guys called him "He Who Shall Not Be Named" the scientist. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Now, I guess my I mean, question to you is: it, so, if you're, if there's a bunch of scientists, obviously coming out and, and saying, "Look, flat Earth is completely wrong. It is not true. I don't know why these people believe in it." What is your retort to that? Every hour. If, 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 a, if they come in and they bring science into it. And they say, look, this is what it, this is, these are the facts that they're looking at. How do you dispute that? <sighs> when anyone because comes back and they say, I'm sorry, what? Oh, sorry. I was just going to say, I just find this really fascinating. Oh, no, no, no. It's okay. We're just hearing I, other people's perspectives. When somebody comes in, they say that we're wrong. We say, okay, prove it. Tell me how you would prove the globe. In fact, the, one of the easiest ways I, I throw it at people is I say, tell me how you can prove the globe without using NASA. And they say, well, what are you talking about? Why not use NASA? I go, well, NASA didn't invent the globe. I, yeah. it, you know, it's not like NASA woke up one day in 1972, you know, during the last Apollo mission and said, well, that's it. There's the blue marble shot. Good night, everybody. Roll credits. 
That's not what they right. did. I mean, it you know, it, we were told it was a globe for at least, depending on who you talk to, we're going to say 500 years, going back to like Copernicus. Mm -hmm. So at least 500 years, at least 20, 25 generations. How did you know? In fact, here's, a, here's another one I'll, I'll throw out at you real quick. Uh, George Orwell, 1984. He had a great quote in 1946 in a, in a magazine, not a flat earther, but he was talking about how science can basically say anything they want and people just buy it. Because if you wear a lab coat and you say, well, this is how it is. It's like, well, he's smarter than us. <laughs> you know, that, that kind of cool. so he said, how, he goes, you could ask anyone on the street how they know the world is a globe. And they'll say, their first reaction is always the same. They'll say, well, <laughs> we know. We know it's, it's a given. It's a no. It's it is known. Game of Thrones, <laughs> and and then you push them and you say, really? How do you know? Then they start getting upset because they don't yeah. remember NASA wasn't even founded until 1958. So how did everybody in 1946 or hell 1957? How did everybody know the world was a globe? They didn't know. They were told. That's a big difference. We're told a lot of things by science. Uh, and in fact, Neil deGrasse Tyson, which I'll, I'll, I'll throw it at him again. He had the, mm -hmm. the one of the most arrogant quotes next to pretty much anything Kanye ever says, which is, <laughs> oh, come on, Kanye. But I have, a, I have a lot of pair of his uh, shoes, though. I'm a big Yeezy fan. Uh, he is. Con Do you have any? No. no. <laughs> well, Kanye's, maybe, quote, Kanye's well, quote, by maybe. the way, is, my biggest regret in life is that I can't see myself live. Wow. <laughs> wow because you know if you got a time machine that's the first thing you would do it's like i'm gonna go to my own concert <laughs> uh no neil said that science is true whether or not you believe in it i thought wow okay he's he's making a leap there which is okay um but is he not really saying provable, provable things are, are there if you can't believe them? Well, well there, there you go. Provable, right? Provable. Yeah. So when he, it's, but I, when, I, when I hear that, I say provable by the common man. So sure. if, you, if I want to say, look, what's the boiling temperature of water at sea level? I can test it. You can test it. We can all test it and then make pasta. But <laughs> if you want to tell me what the core of the earth looks like, uh, how exactly are you doing that? I mean, you say, well, the core, it's 4,000 miles straight down. It's molten. It's spinning. It's, it's, you saw the movie, obviously. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it's like, uh, with, with what's his face from Batman? The core? Um, the core? That one? The what? The, the one into the core? Where yeah, the core. Right yeah, down. the core. Oh my God. It's like, we, we it's watched that movie and just, movie. I mean, it's an interest. The special effects are great. It's an interesting concept, yeah. but, uh, Wow. But the point is, is that that movie fills in gaps that people don't know. It's like, look, the deepest hole ever drilled. It's like, how do you know what the core looks? looks? Well, what's the deepest hole ever drilled? 2,000 miles? 1,000 miles? 100 miles? 10? Yeah. No. <laughs> it's eight miles. So, but you're showing me these wonderful, we've seen the bands, right? Red and orange and yellow. And it's like these perfect, yeah. these perfectly met a thousand, thousand mile bands. And it's like, where are you getting that from exactly? Well, a lot of people don't know is that the, in the, in the old days, not that long ago, they actually, you put in small print, you know, artist rendering, you know, not a real thing. In fact, you look up wiki, they'll, they'll say it in wiki in, in the fine prints. Like, yeah, we have no idea what's down there. We're yeah. just extrapolating from volcanoes. And it's like. That's it? That's what you got? But you're showing me a cross-section of Jupiter and Saturn and Neptune and, and planets that you even yeah. claim to have been on. And you're and so, no. Um, I'm sorry. Science makes leaps of faith that, hell, religion does. And mm -hmm. at that point, they're kind of going in the same boat. And wh why wouldn't they? Right? You know, science, it's a slippery slope. If you're in a lab coat, you make these decisions. It's like, oh, yeah, people... Pe it's what my my quote is is that science is right until the day it's not sure so and I, and I know you got a whole bunch of questions let me throw one more thing out which it wasn't in the movie which was um the coelacanth fish a great example uh the coelacanth uh, c-o-e-l-a-c-a-n-t-h right dead 75 million or 70 million years at least right super oh, like the old arthropod kind of creature whatever yeah like a whole bunch of extra yeah. fish well no no not not the not the mollusky looking horseshoe crab thing it's, it's just it's just an ugly fish with a bunch of extra fins dead for yeah. 70 million years and every scientist you could have oh my god you would have cleaned up go back in time and bet every scientist so you know everyone knows well here's the fossil it's obviously dead for 70 million years and then they caught one off of Madagascar and South Africa and Mozambique. And then National Geographic finally caves in and does a special. It's like they've got divers swimming with them now. It's like, yeah. So how did everybody get it so freaking wrong? 
It's because science builds on the back of other scientists and they assume that whoever did the work previous is absolutely right. They don't double check their pre the previous guy's work. Kind of like the line that Tesla said. When you get up to a certain level in science, the formulas get so high, but nobody checks the previous work. <laughs> so he goes, he goes, you get up to a certain level and the equations are meaningless because right. nobody, nobody checks anything. Anyway, sorry, I ramble. Yeah. No, no, it's kind of it's kind of like that. It's it's actually really interesting. It's kind of like that phenomenon that you kind of learn in, in psych, and where you know I whisper my, in something into Mike's ear, Mike whispers something into um, into Mark's ear, and then by the time it gets to the fiftieth person, it's a totally different sentence, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the the, the the grapevine, absolutely. A uh, bunch of movies have, have touched on that. Uh, I love media, and you're absolutely right. The, the grapevines can butcher things, absolutely yeah. butcher stuff, and. Yeah, unfortunately, that that tends to happen with science as well. And people have accused me. So, oh, you're are you smarter than Hawking or Einstein? I'm going, God no. You know, they're they're serious. You know, uh, math math heavy people, yeah, and the, and they right. they have wonderful minds. But the problem is, if the foundations that they were working on are wrong, eh, then their stuff is wrong too. Not yeah. saying that you know that there aren't brilliant people, just yeah. saying that they make mistakes. Right. Yeah. Right. So. Um. I had a fair question unless you want to ask something. No, no, please, um, please. I was going to say, because um, we kind of go over like, all of the, like the, like the clues, like what, if you, so in terms of what, what, for, for you, if you, if coming kind of basing on backpacking what Mike was saying, what is like your, your, you know, the first two things that you would go to, you know, to oh yeah, 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 yeah. Well, I've got, I've got and, five, and five Sorry. real quick. In fact, I had to come okay. up with these a couple years ago because there was a, um, a German television team which matched me up with a astrophysicist out of Georgetown, of all places. Uh, oh. German television was called ZF1. You can listen to the interview. It's on, on my channel. People say, oh, it's not real. It's like, no, I actually recorded it. Didn't tell them. Yeah. And, yeah. and uh, so they asked me, said, come up with five scientific questions and we'll record them and we'll play it back for him. So you guys are never going to speak to each other. We're just going to go back and forth because astrophysicists, honestly, I feel bad because when your education goes past your master's degree, unless you're in Matt getting a, a PhD in English, your social skills send to tend to slide, <laughs> that, which is why Bill Nye gets on television so much because true astrophysicists, you know, Neil, there's only three popular astrophysicists in the whole world. Um, Neil Tyson, Brian Cox, and Michio Kaku. There is nobody yeah. else. I mean, those are the only guys they put on television because the other guys are like one and two syllables. Like, yes. Yeah, right. A black hole. You're absolutely correct. It's a, right. Wow. And, and, and so, sorry, once again, um, the one thing I did notice from the documentary, too, yeah. was the fact that a lot of you guys, I know, especially yourself, um, there was Nathan Thompson and Patricia Steer. Yeah. All three of you were very well spoken individuals and you've, you commanded an audience very well. Well, thank you. And just by speaking with yeah. you now we notice the same thing you're very articulate yeah. you're very well spoken well, and another side of it is the um, scientists that they would show didn't appear to be as interesting as you and i think that in itself is definitely something that people would gravitate to it, it people is would tend to go towards something just speaking uh devil's advocate no no you're absolutely time. right yeah. and there is a problem with the, which is why neil tyson doesn't do debates he just goes on stage and it's like you know he's i call him a, a, a jack-in-the-box it's like wind up dun, 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 dun. space is amazing you know and you put him back in the can and ship him off yeah. to the next city uh michio kaku just gets mad most <laughs> of the time and brian cox is just that british indignant thing yeah. you know it's like oh it's obviously crazy so wow i sound like dracula just now so um so yeah, patricia by the way did radio uh in her oh. early early career and nathan thompson his mind is absolutely the the movie didn't even do it justice i know it made him seem like yeah. he was a bit you know a little twitchy right but yeah. he was his mind <laughs> is <laughs> his mind is way way out there okay so the five points real quick so they came to me and said okay you're gonna you're gonna do this back and forth thing give us five your your best five stuff and I go, okay, five. First thing, long distance photography. That is far and away the uh, the first one that we go to, which is if the curvature of the earth, and I'm talking less than 500 miles because I know after 500 miles, you have to work in some fun geometry, but less than 500 miles, the curvature of the earth is eight inches per mile per mile, which is eight inches per mile squared. So at 10 miles, it's 10 times 10, which is hundred times eight, which is 800 inches. 50 miles would be pushing 1700 feet. And it goes on and on from there. 
because it's got to get steeper, you know, because eventually it's going to go vertical if, if it's a sphere. So right. people, and I didn't even do this in the clues. You can look, I never told anyone to run to the beach with, oh, with cameras. Just, so okay. the side yeah. to side doesn't make any difference. It's the forward and back. Because remember, the only two yeah. arguments you have if you're not going to lean on NASA is ships going on the horizon or sticks and shadows. Sticks and shadows just confuses most people. Honest to God, I have tried this with audiences. It doesn't matter. Both our side and their side, sticks and shadows just confuses people. Right. So we go with ships going, going over the horizon. And what that means is eventually a, a boat, whatever it is, there's going to be an object off in the distance, which you can't see because it's going to be on the other side of the curve. It's going to be behind the curve. I'm not doing a movie reference. It's just that's what it is. So a boat, a boat but, and, and up until 15 years ago, I would have been absolutely with you. Or hell, 10 years ago, I would have been with you. The boat's gone, it's gone, it's gone. And that's it. Because the, the resolution on cameras, I mean, you could have had a $3,000 or $3, Sony blah, blah, blah on your shoulder, zoom in. It's just going to be this distorted, awful thing. Nowadays, right. you can take a $500 uh, Nikon P900, P1000, whatever. You zoom in. The boat that was gone is not gone so you're anymore. Gonna see that ship. Yeah, you can now see the boat, and then right. you zoom in again, and the boat's and it just keeps going. It's like, well, eventually you've got a problem <laughs> because the boat yeah. should be gone. Now they can claim refraction all you want. In fact, I'll show you a wonderful video. I'll, I'll link it to you. The one that just destroyed them wasn't the boats. It was um, some. Uh, where are you guys? California? Uh, no, we're in Vancouver, Canada. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, I, yeah. I didn't. I don't know. I didn't even ask that. I lived, by the way, up yeah. in um, uh, Vancouver Island for a year. Oh, nice. Yeah, a couple cool. of years ago. I didn't even know. I didn't even know Victoria was a thing. Wow. Most American. The what? What were you doing in the, on the island? Gun running. No. Oh, I was nice. no. I was dating a. a <laughs> I was dating a. Um... <laughs> Sorry. No. I, like, oh, I sure. meant it was meth labs. <laughs> oh no! No, nice. it was. Uh, I was running a series of them out of these little mobile homes. No, it was, um, the, it was, uh, I was dating a girl up there, a flat earther who flew down to a meetup in Seattle. And she said, Hey, why don't you, God, my rides here again. So the, they're, they're, they're listening in. <laughs> Seriously. I've never heard so many sirens. Hey man, the minute you start talking, you, when you brought up Kanye, he sent a, <laughs> <laughs> no, no. So, um, no, the, the girl came down and she said, Hey, why don't you come up and, and you can make videos. She worked for a, um, a video game company up there called, um, Kicks Eye, which was a spinoff of the people that did, um, Farmville. Okay. Uh, you know, that big thing, you know, the, the um, so uh, I lived there, I lived for a year up there. So I'm sorry, Let's go back. So there is a uh, some oil rigs okay, we love the anecdotes yeah okay. well like we, we just like hearing about don't you. worry about it so there's <laughs> some, there's some oil rigs off of california and they're yeah. some are right in front of each other but they're offshore miles offshore okay. and then in fact i'll, I'll make sure I'll, I'll be sure to send you this video here the next little break in the action we get which okay. is you look at the oil rigs right and here's here's first one here at six miles or seven miles the next one at like nine or ten right behind it and you can line them up and you can see them right next to each other and you're going right. wow that's pretty great well the problem and the the, the globalists are having a, just a devil of a time with it, it normally you would have the horizon cutting off the front of it right you wouldn't be able to see the entire oil rigs because you know there'd be some sort of curvature or refraction or atmospheric lensing or whatever now the problem is is the horizon is way 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 behind it and you can see it behind both of these rigs and you're going and and they don't know well there's refraction i'm going refraction can't put the horizon behind these objects the whole point of refraction is that you will cut off part of the oil rigs that's what the, the videos we keep getting sent it's like oh look the ship going this sailboat look it's being cut in half it's no it's getting mirrored it's like looking over a bridge on a hot day you know the if you watch somebody walk off in the distance or a cyclist you know they'll, they'll stretch and then finally they'll looks like they're floating and, yeah. and but this video just absolutely blew them away and we can do that just about any clear morning in california so where was i going with that oh yeah long distance photography so that was long distance photography. photography okay the, the next four are pretty quick um the second one is gravity versus the vacuum of space which is which is stronger gravity or a vacuum and people say, well, you know, you don't know. It's like, well, you know, like when you suck, um, take a straw and you suck a soda out of the bottom of a glass. Why didn't the, the soda stay in the glass? It's like, well, the vacuum force, you know, you, you were stronger than that. And it's like, okay, let's take a little thought experiment. Let's say there's a second floor of your house where you are right now. You turn it into a small vacuum chamber. And you have a valve above you. You pop the valve. What happens? Well, if you know anything about physics, it's not like the movies. It's instant. It's violent. 
it's yeah. it's ama- it's amazingly quick and you can look at a button you know look up videos online like um vacuum versus steel rail car i mean it's it's the movies i can't even it, watch it, it, the last like a, a crab is getting sucked right into it kind of thing oh yeah no a- oh, it's i mean people like we've done like submarines pressurized accidents it's horrifying when you yeah. like read the description it's like it's so fast you don't even know you're dead <laughs> you're just yeah. dead you're sucked through things the, the, anyway, this, I like so like watching the last um, the last five minutes of the movie Aliens, where Sigourney's climbing up the the thing and <laughs> everything's blowing out, and I was going, "Wow, she's really tough." It's like, no, she'd be dead instantly. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the alien yeah. would be dead too, but so would everyone yeah. else. It's like, sure, her dead, everyone's dead, and then just an empty spaceship with an end. In fact, right? Yeah, just floating away. So <laughs> you're not going after Ridley Scott. Just saying. Well, I'm just well. All movies do this. <laughs> all movies have done this, and it's like, oh, yeah. you know, there's a hole in the side. We only got two minutes of air left. Get the duct tape. It's like, oh yeah. my god, you're killing me. You're, you're saying duct tape doesn't fix everything. <laughs> no, no. But the ISS has claimed that they actually have pa- patched holes in the ISS with their finger until, in fact, one of the time they said they fixed it with some dried meatloaf. It's like, really? You did not well. Again, people don't know physics. We are not taught a lot of things. We're not taught physics or engineering or chemistry or biology. We just get through school, and at the end, we forgot everything that we even was brought up to right. us. So the point is, so, so you know what happens, right? You pop the valve above you, everything equalizes, right? Well, when you go outside, why didn't the atmosphere that's outside your room? Why isn't that being sucked off into the vacuum of space? Mm-hmm. And, and your initial response, I actually had a guy come back to come back at me and said, well, because there's so much more gravity. It's like, no, it's the same gravity. If the gravity, you couldn't even keep the air in your room. How is it being kept outside? Mm-hmm. And the answer is, well, because it's enclosed. It's you're in a pressurized system. You're in a box. And that's why. I mean, the, 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 the line that I throw at science is I go, where does our atmosphere end and space begin? Where is the bleeding edge of space? What mileage chart is? In fact, not only where, what, what altitude is it at? What happens there? Yeah. Is this is it's just a couple of particles just sitting around, just kind of floating? It's like no, no, it would be yeah. just shredded. It would be absolutely shredded. Sorry, third one. I know you got probably have responses, yep. but I gotta, let me get through yeah, these, yeah, these three. Um, third one. Oh, I forgot. Hang on. So it's I have some gravity versus the vacuum of space. Oh, the eclipse shadow. Clip shadow, uh, the moon is 2,000 miles wide, but the blackout zone is only 70 miles wide. And you say, and I go, why is it so small? Because, you know, we say the moon is about that wide. <laughs> and they say, well, right. no, it's convexing like a, like a magnifying glass only with shadow. And it's like, well, okay. But if that's the case, then shouldn't the sun, because the sun, or I'm sorry, when the earth is in front of the sun and the earth is about 8,000 miles wide, shouldn't that cast a blackout zone like four times larger, 250 miles on the moon? We never see this, you know, the moon should turn into an eyeball, you know, mm-hmm. but it doesn't. We always just see these massive shadows or a blood root, a blood moon, you know, where it's it's just absolutely blood, you know, and, and there's this huge curvature that goes over. It's like, that's, why, why is it the opposite? It's what's good for the goose should be good for the gander, that sort of thing. Uh, fourth right. one is the moon temperature. I didn't even know this was real until like um, maybe three months before the documentary. They never did talk about it, which is the moon temperature is cold. And I, in fact, I had a guy tell me this and I said, you know, the first response is like, what do you mean? Like, like it's cold at night? And like, no, man, the moon is generating a cold laser light. I go, how would you even know this? And he goes, you take a point and click uh, infrared thermometer one night when the moon's out. Point it at somewhere on the ground where the moonlight is, and then point it where the moonlight isn't. And what we found, again, this is a $20 test you can do, or whatever it is in Canada. And you, you point and click in this, and it's up to 13 degrees. I'm not going to convert it to Celsius for you, because I'm American. Yeah. Uh, 13, it's, um, uh, it's up to 13 degrees Fahrenheit, warmer in the shade than it is in the moonlight. Well... That's really tough because that's the opposite of what sunlight does. Remember, it's like it's 90 degrees in the sun, it's 80 degrees in the shade. Well, if it's 50 degrees in the moonlight, it's 60 degrees in the moon shade. Now, but but I'll, I'll stop you there. So if something, though, is from is, is that far away, though, so shouldn't the temperature be different anyways, though, by the time it hits Earth? Not warmer. 
remember, you gotta remember what, why we say the moon is doing what it's doing. It's the moon is supposedly reflecting the sun's light. That's the whole, what we've been told our entire lives. And that is the sun is reflecting, or sorry, the moon is reflecting some of the sun's radiation. At the very least, it should be neutral. It should never go negative. In fact, I had to learn new technology just to figure this out, which was apparently we have this in universities. We've had this for years. In fact, they've now converted to the little cosmic guns you can use on yourself. Cold laser light is a real thing. You can act on not like Mr. Freeze Ray, Batman type stuff. But, but you can actually cool things down with laser light. You just change the frequency. So does that prove two questions there? One, <laughs> why is the moon generating this type of light? And, and the second one, sorry, it's more of a statement than a question, which is, does that prove in any way, shape or form a flat earth? No, but it completely destroys the relationship between the sun and the moon. Because again, 13 degrees, and we can do this all the day long. I mean, we've seen it as low as five and we've done it with digital stuff and water. We've done all sorts of fun tests. On this and, and oh, oh, oh wait one more wait one more Sorry. which is Sorry. i was the first one to suggest it where i said um I, I just happened to throw it out there to this guy that was calling in and i said i go well if you take a magnifying glass of sunlight you can burn things like paper what happens if you take a magnifying glass to moonlight it gets even <laughs> colder it's so freaky so anyway uh last but not least is the um the van allen radiation trap question which has never been beaten which is why i save it for for the finale and I say, okay, Van Allen radiation belts announced by NASA engineer Van Allen back in 1959. Right. Says that, you know, super deadly. He said, you never, ever should go up there. We're going to die if we try to go through it. And then Kennedy the very next year is like, we're going to go to the moon this decade and do the other thing, you know, blah, blah, blah. So he goes, he goes back to Van Allen and, and Van Allen's quote was, oh, we're just going to go real fast. Okay. Well, our best speed is like 18,000 miles an hour, if you believe it. And uh, they're supposedly 60,000 miles thick and you're doing round trip, right? So mm -hmm. are the, the, the question is, are the Van Allen belts deadly? Yes or no? If you say yes, then how do the Americans go through it round trips, right? With using plastic and um, aluminum <laughs> as shielding. Nobody died. Nobody got radiation poisoning. Nobody even got cancer. There's still five of these guys limping around today. Uh, right. Remember, the only things that can stop radiation are uh, gold, uh, lead, and a whole bunch of water. And if you say, well, you turn around, you say, well, no, they're not deadly. And I was like, oh, okay. And then you go to the NASA.gov website and you look up something called Orion Trial by Fire. It's a little video that they right. made because they were talking about their Mars program. And they said, well, yeah, we're not going to be able to test any capsules with people in them because we haven't solved the radiation problem. What are you talking about? You haven't solved it. You solved it perfectly. You solved it in the 60s. Why are you complaining now? What, what's the big deal? Right. And this thing was made in 2014. So yeah. what, what the hell? And they still haven't. You know, and the other, you know, the other questions that come up would be, you know, after that, it's like, why we have, why have we not gone to the moon since 19? Nobody's gone to the moon since 1972. And every science person, they say, oh, we're going soon. <laughs> go, yeah. Really? I've heard that every yeah. president since Reagan. Um, so anyway, those five questions, are the ones I threw out there. Uh, usually the first two is what, what gets them, um, the um, uh, gravity versus the vacuum of space and long distance photography. Anyway, sent right. him off to the guy in Georgetown. That was it. He folded. I was like, nope, not doing it. And he, I, I didn't even solicit him. You know, he, they, they, he went to the Germans and said, nope, not going to happen. They went home mad and the segment never aired. So, oh, really? Nope. Couldn't. How could he? To, yeah. be, to be fair, a scientist is so tunnel visioned in their, in their field that right. that what are they going to do i mean yeah he might be able to answer one or two of them but he's not gonna be able to answer some of them because they're just not in his discipline so he's you, he's like well, i mean what's he going to do with the moon question or what's he yeah. going to do with the um uh the vacuum versus the gravity thing he right. or even, heck maybe even long distance photography the physicist isn't necessarily going to know much about that so would, would you say that all scientists have tunnel vision or are you, are you putting a couple that that you personally uh, no 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 i've talked i've talked to enough of them they're all they've all when you get to your specialized field you're well, i mean that's what you do i mean there's guys out there i mean i met guys that all their entire lives now are going to be dedicated to trying to solve dark matter which mm -hmm. is which is a theory and they're going to spend their entire lives and millions of dollars of grant money trying to decipher dark matter it's like yeah but you just came up with a term because you don't know what else is out there right. and you know other things but yes very very <laughs> tunnel visioned uh which is all and when you get to that phd level uh, no offense if you guys have phds 
but when you when you get up yeah. to that high level, you're so indoctrinated at that point that you're never gonna. The reason why we have such a hard time getting debates is because they just won't take it seriously. They they say, well, it's beneath us. I I, I don't even. I, I, why would you yeah, even ask me that such I a thing? Agree with. I don't think that anyone should ever ever say that regardless of what you believe right you know it's, it's you know you we can say this with a lot of things I, i'm doing a rant this week on discrimination and you know once you're in far enough you uh you tend to you you, you hold fast i mean even i'm guilty sure. of it sometimes even, yeah. Yeah. i mean yeah. flat earthers are the most open people you ever want to meet but when you've been in flat earth long enough you've heard the questions long enough but we still you know i to this day like i look for for emails coming it's like oh please show me something i haven't seen before yeah but that's what's interesting that's kind of why we started this podcast mm. is because we want to get other people's pers perspectives totally. and to hear other people and in a way it's it's interesting because um just listening to you and listening to you on the show and just seeing your presence online it was just it was fascinating that there's a community out there that that has this this connection and it was just interesting to hear that from your point of view and to get a sense of who you are and like what you represent which we find really fascinating as well and kind of going back to i believe it was point was it point two about the vacuum vacuum of space yeah point, so point two are you saying that just to kind of go back so i'm just trying to remember a little bit are you saying that um because we're living under a dome is what you're saying yep are you saying that it's like a vacuum seal meaning that whatever's in here yes it's hermetically i'll use the word hermetically even though a lot of people don't know what hermetically is it's hermetically sealed but at the same time it still has to follow other physics rules like air pressure you know if what we're breathing in now is 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 a gas and it's barely even oxygen to be honest and right. it still presses you know people complain they say well it gets thinner and thinner as you go up i go yeah that would work just as fine because it's pressing down no different than water pressure you know when you dive in 50 feet of water you don't feel much you go down to a thousand feet you're dead so right. the same same thing sort of here you know when you go up higher and higher i mean hell even at thirty thousand feet you can't breathe tech twenty thousand feet you have a hard time breathing but right. but the only reason you can keep any of it in at all is because it's in a structure plain plain and right. simple in fact there was um something that came to me uh, it's amazing how many times i've gotten this question over the last two years they've said um you know do you believe in climate change and i said uh yeah yeah i do as a matter of fact but i believe it because um, it makes more sense in, in an enclosed system. In fact, doesn't the whole term greenhouse gases make more sense if it's an actual greenhouse? Yeah. And that, right. that resonated with a whole bunch of people. I go, look, I go, you know, even young kids have a hard time. It's like, well, what happened? You know, you think about what happens when you get up to that high level of atmosphere and then it's space, right? right. It's like atmosphere, atmosphere, space. It's like, really? Wait, it shouldn't be like a sonic boom thing. Should we like rip out of it? And if we did rip out yeah. of it, would it create a hole? Would our first space shot, you know, would have, you know, kind of emptied out the entire world? Kind of like, um, what was the, um, the, the line from uh, Oppenheimer where, where there were some physicists, their math was wrong, but they said, you know, there's a percentage of a chance that we could actually ignite the entire atmosphere and burn the whole thing up. Right. And people yeah, were going, yeah, yeah but <laughs> who's going to know? Yeah. yeah, we're not gonna get in I, trouble. Right. Yeah. Sorry. It, it's it's funny. I'm I mean, <clears throat> I, I'm always I'm always up to, for learning, you know, different things. And you know, in in terms of who I am as a person, like I'm I'm probably the biggest skeptic that I know of just anything in general. But it was interesting. I found myself on 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 TikTok of all things on a video that I saw that was posted by someone, um, I think actually in Washington, and it was a girl and she had posted this this video. And she, so if you kind of situate it for context, her house is about on this really long street. So there's a house, there's a house here, a, a massive street here. And then on the other side, there's a whole bunch of just residential houses all the way down yeah. for probably about, probably about two miles. And I don't know, you, 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 you probably know what I'm getting to. And she, she's like, I always take this bike ride. And she's like, for, she's like today, like I'm, I'm going to record just for today to show people. And she goes down the lane with her bike and she's, she's showing and she has her camera on her phone pointed at um, uh, a structure that's in the water that's about probably a mile away off the coast. Okay. So she's got her, she's got her, she's got, she's going on her bike and she's got the, her camera pointed at the, at the structure. Now in, in the camera, when she's just left her house, she's already looking at the structure and it's, um, and, it, and it's tiny. Yeah. 
And it, and, I, I, and it was messing with me because I watched this like 10 or 15 times. And as she's approaching it and getting closer to the, uh, the image off the coast, this structure is now massive. So it was interesting, though, because it, it, if, you know, if that's the case, they, you know, shouldn't it have kind of been keeping a very similar size all throughout? But it was, it was odd because it almost looked like she was like, playing around with her camera settings. But it, she didn't change it the entire way through. And once she approached it... Oh, you got to send me this. Was, I'm, yeah, I'm I gotta, intrigued. Because everybody... There's a lot of people in our community that try to find anomalies. You know, they try to, I mean, I, I don't want to get into the whole, you know, is, is it virtual? I did a rant recently where it's like, well, if, if it's if it's flat and it's closed, it's probably digital. But most people don't get it anyway. I mean, the the Matrix is 21 years old now. And a lot of it just, it, oh, it's a wonderful movie, but people still don't get it. They they don't understand. It's like, look, we made, we, made, we made a series of virtual movies and then we just stopped making them. It's like because yeah. people, it was just too heady. For people, it's like, wow, you really? Because you're playing Fortnite and GTA and Minecraft wow. and all this stuff, you realize it's built on a completely flat, flat box. I mean, people, if, Fortnite is, if you're, you, what, Fortnite? Oh, Fortnite is just, I just can't, sorry. Well, no, yeah. it, well, it's an abomination is what it is. Yeah. It's a yeah, freaking, smart, you don't, it's, you don't play it? <laughs> it's, well, no, I'm a lifelong, I'm a lifelong gamer. I grew up when, you know, when we used to play, you know, when id games, you know, when Quake and Doom and, yeah. Everything was dark and gritty and Duke Nukem. And, and so when Fortnite came out, it's like, great. You put a candy-coated topping shell on the top of a first-person shooter. And you took yeah. out all the blood. It's like, and every, and all the kids were like, oh, we want to get the new dance moves. We got to get the new this. It's yeah. like, really? Microtransactions? Really? But yeah. it's like, uh, yeah. whatever. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> but the point is, is all those games, again, are built on an absolutely perfectly flat. In fact, they're built in a box. It's basically a cake box. Have you yeah. ever seen how they're built? It's fascinating. The, the sky, you know, everything, all the spheres and everything that's done in the sky, it's called a, um, a skybox system. It's because right. computers, <laughs> people, they just, they don't get it. Um, computers, like, can't draw circles. It's everything's I was just square. You were going to get into not being able to draw circles properly because once you zoom in enough, it's pixelated. It, gets, it becomes very pixelated. Yeah. Right? What's yeah. how think? I mean, if you've ever done any development, think about it. How would you ever tell a computer to draw a circle? We just take it for granted. It's like, uh, I, in fact, I'm tempted one of these days to get somebody to like zoom in on like on a person drawing drawing a circle and see what the hell it looks like because well, no. that's probably going to get you, creepy. It, you might you might find something in government that just shuts you down yeah, exactly <laughs> where i just like freeze up and like fall over <laughs> yeah it would be awful but but anyway the, the point is is there's a lot of um things I, I did a rant recently where i was talking about the double slit experiment um the lesser known neuroscience versus free will have you ever heard that one <laughs> oh, well, that one's freaky that. so real, real real quick we can go we can go long if you can go if you want to go long yeah, so yeah, we got time so um there was a, uh, the, like with all scientists, you, you put somebody's, you tape electrodes to their head and you put them in front of a computer, start measuring stuff because that's what they do. And they were saying, okay, pick numbers, you know, hit your numbers. But just before you pick the number, note the, the time in seconds and tenths of seconds before you pick the number. So as soon as you decide to pick the number five, note that, right? Here's where it gets weird, right? So you think of a number, right? And you're just like, you think of a number six, right? You thought of it just then. You just conjured it out of thin air. No, you didn't. The, the, the computers could actually see the thought process ramping up eight seconds before you actually picked it. And it's like, what? <laughs> and they can do this all day long. And this blow science, you know, science, this was not, this was one of those experiments they kind of put under, you know, in a, in a filing cabinet as fast as they could. Because yeah. science hates the idea of predestination. Which is, you know, that's why they call it neuroscience versus free will, which is, okay, did you pick the number six or did you already pick it before you even were born type of deal? And it's like, uh, you know, it goes into the whole, um, the line that uh, the Oracle told Neo, which again, most people missed, which was, you know, he was, oh, you know, I can't make that choice, you know, the Trinity choice. And she goes, you didn't come here to make the choice. You already made it. You're here to understand why you made it. And they just right. pff, went straight over the head of, of almost everybody. It's like, yeah. Yeah, because he's not, you know, he's done this. They were giving clues to this the entire movie, where it's like, oh, this yeah. is the sixth iteration, this is the seventh iteration, you know, you know, of the anomaly, which means he had gone through it before. It wasn't just the architect's point of view; it was also his point of view. And the oracle, uh, anyway. Sorry, I ramble. No, okay. where were we? <laughs> I don't even remember. We, I had, we were. I mentioned a thing on. I was going to try to find that TikTok and send it to you. Oh, okay. But the one thing, 
one oh, thing. Oh yeah, 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 please, yeah, please do send me that. And by the yeah. way, since we're in here, so I've got a, I've got new playlists that I've made in the last couple of weeks. Random my path. Um, yeah, one of them's called uh, Experiments, Flat Earth Tests, Experiments, and Observations. In fact, I will send you the link. Experiment will actually to the actual playlist, and that covers a lot of stuff that we've been doing over the last couple of years stuff that wasn't in the documentary the documentary by the way and you can say whatever you want about it but you got to remember that one it wasn't my production <laughs> it was the um the director with that you never saw uh, you may have saw just a glimpse of him you wouldn't know because he probably looked like a cameraman um he hated flat earth by the time we were done with that thing oh my god he hated it so so much um but not for the reason you might think. He hated it because if you remember the end of the towards the end of the movie where that twelve year old kid was asking me a question when I was at the conference, that's what happened. He's going, okay, right. hair messing. What, what, that, that, was that edited? Because when he asked the yeah. question, he said, and then you immediately said, "How old are you?" Like, what was the question that he asked you? Because I I feel like it was edited out. I didn't hear. Yeah, I didn't hear a question. Oh right. Well, well the whole thing was edited to death. Yeah. I mean, even yeah. the the stupid um, green button thing. Uh, where did oh. did I or did not not push the green button? My right. God! In fact, they asked me if they could use that gag in the film, and the reason was is because they to, when you're filming stuff, you wait till the characters leave frame, right? And you keep zooming in, and they happen to zoom in on this button. And then the editor thought, hey, wouldn't it be great if we just edited out the part where Mark was beaten on the button and realized <laughs> it wasn't working? And then finally thought, well, maybe they have touch screen, which wasn't even an HD monitor. Like the place was like an old fairground. And, yeah. uh, and, but, but it was a, it was a clever gag because like, oh, Mark yeah. missed something obvious. It's like, oh, yeah. what? No. Do you, do you like the way that, uh, you, you were portrayed in the movie and like, and, or not the movie, but the documentary and like how the Flatters community was portrayed? Um, yes and no. My initial predictions were, were spot on, which I said, uh, one, once I saw, I was the first person to see it. Uh, I saw it in a hotel room with the, uh, the producers and the, the director and, and guys. And Patricia was there. We saw it in a, um, uh, just before it premiered at the Toronto Film Festival, okay. and which was a big festival, I didn't realize. And I said, I told her, I said, I go, flat earthers are going to hate it, but there's going to be a lot of people that's going to think it's it's interesting. And then I had the pleasure because there we got into just about every film festival that we entered in. I had the pleasure of going to different film festivals and watching it with the audience, not telling them I was in there, you know, wear a hat. No, look around and <laughs> no, some people did recognize me though and what i noticed was that it was because they went back and forth from flat earther to scientist flat earther to psychiatrist flat earther to whatever it made it i'll use a drug reference it wasn't pure uncut flat earth because you could see people getting twitchy because they're like oh flat earth's too much oh there's a scientist okay i'm okay i'm okay and flow oh, there's more flat earth okay it's a, it's, there's a shrink saying that they're crazy so, yeah. in fact, the first 20 minutes, the funniest part, uh, I'll, I'll share a quick story with you. Uh, yeah. the, the first 20 minutes of it, most people didn't even know it was real. They thought it was like a piece of docufiction because yeah. they, they honestly thought it's like, oh, you know, it's a parody of something, right? Yeah. And then the, the, the audiences, they all snapped. You know, they all had this moment. It's like, <laughs> wait a minute. There's something big and weird out in the Internet. I know nothing about it. And there was this editor in Los Angeles who they showed the film to. He knew nothing about this. And at the end, he goes to his, his friend. He goes, he goes, man, he goes, where did you get the budget for this movie? And he goes, I know you guys. Where'd you get the funding for this? He goes, what are you talking about? He goes, all those actors, they played it so straight. <laughs> and, and, and he honestly thought, he, he, he thought that we were all actors. And um, he goes, no, man, that was real. And, you know, pupils, he's going, wait. That conference happened. <laughs> he goes, yeah, man, we were there for three days. And it's like, what? How is this even possible? So I'm, I'm, what, okay. I like the way that it ended up being because look, the way it was, it generated a lot of interest, huge amounts of interest. Totally. Would I have changed anything? Uh, I would have probably I mean, changed the ending. <laughs> Because he was picking on Jaren for whatever reason, people like to pick on Jaren. Uh, Jaren Campanella, the guy that did laser experiment. Uh, the first time, like for example, he um, where the, the the beam got super super huge. <laughs> yep. They didn't say why. It was well because you, when you leave a, a military grade laser on for longer than like five minutes, it melts the condenser, possibly depending on what model it is. But the second one was, and it was again, it was Jaren's fault. 
and he didn't have line of sight before he even got there. He went out to this place just based on what Google Earth told him. So he goes out to this place and and said, well, it's all, it looks flat on Google Earth. I'll just shoot it here. And he never went out during the day to see if he actually had line of sight. And so when and, and he got so much hell after the documentary that he finally drove out there. And I did not know this until like two months later. And I see him making a video where he drives out there and, and I'm, well, why is he going out there? It's like, well, he goes, wow, I didn't have line of sight. It's like, dude, you never even checked out the place before you, you just went live. You yeah, bought yeah. the camera. The first rule, and Jaron knows this now, he learned his lesson, which was you never go live the first go round ever. That's why you call it a dry run. You don't bring your team, the team in and say, okay, here we go. And then you, you can't, you can't shoot it. However, right. I'm still kind of mixed because would I have changed the ending? I mean, would it have helped us or would it have hurt us? Hard to say. I, I probably would have changed the ending, you know, or I would have made it, Jaren go in and do something else, you know, made sure it was a little more favorable. But it didn't hurt us as much because by the time we got to that point, remember it was 100 minutes long, by the time we got to that point, most people didn't even know what they were looking at anyway, including flat earthers. They really did. I mean, the average audience, you know, you were so shell shocked by the whole thing that I asked them, I asked audience members, I go, I go, so what do you think happened in the end? I go, oh, no, but it was bad. Right. They would ask me, I go, yeah. they go, it was bad. Yeah. And I go, well, yeah, but do you, do you even yeah. understand what was supposed to happen? And they go, no. <laughs> it's like, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And national geographic yeah. did the same thing to us. Um, we did a 10 mile experiment across a body of water and they set it up. I, I did not want to do this with them because it was a horrible lake outside of California. It was gross and salty and awful, 100 degrees. And they waited too long and the balloons were on the other side of the lake and they were going to raise them up until they were supposedly above the curve. We could see them on the beach. And they, so could they. And you're like, um, so? <laughs> and then all of a sudden, what happened? That footage, that entire part of the experiment was gone. Now we recorded right. the whole thing. We were, you know, we had guys who were streaming it live for hours, you know, the entire, and we told people, it's like, oh yeah, they're never going to, they're never going to air this. And they never did. Um, yeah. th another quick thing. Um, the director, one of the things that really stuck out to me was when we were at the Kennedy space center, there was the, it wasn't the blue marble shot. It was the first iPhone shot. Uh, you guys could look it up. It's the one from like 2004 or five done by Robert Simmons, I believe. And, he it was the one where he completely built it from scratch because there was only one shot of the earth from space full shot of the earth from space from 1972 until 2015 so when apple made their first iphone you know with the earth background they had to literally right. fabricate it from scratch they had to literally build it in photoshop and right. he admitted to it the guy the engineer it's like oh yeah we had to build it because there were no images out there no one questioned that i don't know why but the point yeah. was when we got to nasa we were inside the space shuttle that image was blown up and it was inside the space shuttle as part of the display. And I'm, I'm looking, <laughs> I'm showing the director, I'm going, um, you realize that's, an, that's, that's like one, it was built by, for Apple. Yeah, sure. It was by a NASA engineer, but I'm sure, pretty sure it's Apple property. And second, you can see the cloning tool using the second or using the Southern hemisphere, because for whatever reason, he must've finished it on a Friday. He had to go get wings and, and happy hour. And it's like, oh, I'll just clone the rest and, and, and throw it out there. And, yeah, yeah. you know, we showed him this, he filmed it. It's like, look, here's a perfect example. Gone, cutting room floor. So I was like, all right. But again, yeah. seven months, whittle it down to 100 minutes. What did you expect? It seems, yeah, it seems like it's a lot of information to kind of whittle down. Especially, I'm sure there's a lot more information you wish you were, could have been more privy to. It, it, what I felt bad was, was when, again, it was supposed, it was initially supposed to be a human interest piece. That's what they said, and, and I, I absolutely believed in it. It was. He absolutely was. In fact, I did not know why they edited it the way they did until I listened to, I, I heard rumors that the iTunes version had a director's commentary. It's like, oh, wow, I might want to listen to this, even though, you know, those guys pretty dry. You know, the editor and the director, the director's really dry. Um, one yeah. of the producers, Caroline, she's actually not bad. And they were talking, talking, it was, and pretty much it was boring. You know, it's like, oh yeah, this, well, we like to shoot this. And oh yeah, this was a fun thing. And uh, Chris Pontius, that was fun to watch. And then they got to the part where the kid walked up, you know, to the microphone. And all of a sudden, all three of them were like, and this is when we had our turning moment and we had to take a stand one way or the other. And it's like, what? It's like, I had to turn this thing up. And it was yeah, because yeah. they were worried about 
you know, uh, uh, what's what's the term? Contaminating the future. You know, it's like, well, it's, you know, the old saying, it's all fun and games until you have kids involved. Yeah. It's like, I didn't ask him to be there. I didn't know who he was. That's why I was, yeah. you know, but but at the same time, sorry, let me let me end that this part with this, no, which is he, Daniel, in showing that 12 year old kid up in the microphone, what that did was I was just inundated by high schools and junior highs that contacted me and said, oh, you want to talk about this before the whole virus thing happened? They, uh, I was getting, just getting, you know, called. I, I did junior high newspapers. <laughs> where, oh, really? Where they were calling me. I mean, the youngest, I think, were, you know, around 12, 13. You know, some of them even calling without um, uh, um, parental supervision. Yeah. Oh, yeah, which, here, go ahead and ask your next question. There's, there's some I, I, I want to look up for you. I, I was going to say about, about the kids. So you were actually getting calls. Did you actually uh, speak at, like, high schools and, and no, elementary schools? No, we only did conference oh conference stuff oh, oh i see i see because we couldn't now they they invited me in fact i was even asked to do a graduation um uh commencement really? exercise at, at like a uh, university in indiana but here's the thing okay. so the students real excited because we do skew younger and I'll, I'll give you some more stuff but the um like here's a um a perfect example this was done back in 2018 this is a middle okay. school i think it's in california yeah so they, they would actually add, they, they actually asked you to come in and speak. Oh yeah. Them. Yeah. But the thing is you have to get administration to get, I have, I have to get teachers uh, permission to, to come in the door okay. and could never get it. So we always did video conferencing because you don't want to get caught. You know, it's like, well, who's, who's talking to the class, Bob? It's like, well, <laughs> but they would, but they would contact you and ask you to come and then you would still get stopped at the door. No, 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 no. Meaning. I would tell them this, always the same thing, which would, oh. they, they would tell me, it's like, all we have to do is get principal such and such as permission. I'm just going, huh? yeah. <laughs> let me know, let me know how that works out. Yeah, definitely. I, 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 I can imagine that like happening right now at a commencement and then special <laughs> guest Mark Sargent and then half of the, half of the room is going excited and the other half <laughs> is all teachers going, let's cut, cut, cut. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't want to get put in that position, but we did a lot of fun video conference stuff where, um, they just, you know, the questions just never stopped. They were, right. you know, because if you're younger, you know, especially under like 18, there's, you got all sorts of questions. And since you, you give as much credibility to people, I'm not trying to say this is a bad thing, but you give as much credibility to people on YouTube with a huge amount of subs as you do a 20 year anchor at a major network. Sure. Which shouldn't Definitely. be like that. PewDiePie should not be the same as Anderson Cooper, <laughs> right? But he is, in fact, even more so. I have talked to many of kids, even though he buys subs out the ass. He he said, he, you know, there are many people. I've talked to kids that say, oh, yeah, he's totally legit. He's absolutely great. Yeah. It's like, that's really, really awesome. I really love to hear that. Do you that. think he buys subs, though? Because I know for a while there, they were having that 100 million challenge with him and T-Series. Oh, God, those two were just buying. Okay, here, <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you this. Subs? You want me to tell you the secret of YouTube? <laughs> Okay, if you have yeah, them, you've got, you've got like eighty thousand, right? Almost eighty. Yeah, 000, right? but I don't really care about the subs. I mean, that's that's fine, but the honestly, if should it be higher? Sure, there are some of our guys. In fact, I'm not even in the top ten of our guys in terms of subs. I get a lot of media stuff, but that's just because media people are usually lazy. <laughs> It's like, you know, they, it's like all they do is type in flat Earth interview. They pull up one of one of mine. It's like, oh, he seems okay. Get him. And they, they don't even bother to dig. The, um, right. uh, but, but when it comes to buying subs, okay, here's the deal with YouTube. So YouTube pays you for hits and subs, <laughs> right? And so what you do is you buy, you buy some hits, right? But the thing is, you're going to get a discount because those hits are coming back to you as a rebate because YouTube's paying you for the hits, but you, and so then you take a, and then people fall into that herd mentality. So once you hit like two, a million, two million, three million subs, people will join your thing and do hits. It's like, oh, like, sub, like, sub, just because they want to be part of the crowd. So you get some more additional right. money. So the problem with PewDiePie was it was turning cyclical to where he just kept putting more, you know, he took, it's like, well, let's take 50% of my revenue and sink it back into subs. And it just kept right. getting bigger and bigger. Well, the problem is, is that he was eclipsing actual celebrities. Remember, he wasn't doing anything. <laughs> PewDiePie yeah. actually yeah, he doesn't, was. he's, I'm not going to call him a no talent hack because that sounds too cliche, <laughs> well, he just did, but, though, so. <laughs> but think about this. He was, he was Katy Perry and Justin Bieber combined 
were like 70 million subs, right? right. <laughs> Taylor Swift, right? And and he was just destroying them and to, to where, where like American producers put him on a television show just was like, well, the numbers have to have some merit. And the television show died. And then, of course, he did the stupid thing ever. He went on Fiverr. You know what that is? Yeah, yeah. I remember that. You remember what yeah. he did on Fiverr? He, he put he was he made a there was some there was like a racist thing yeah, yeah, yeah i got i i gotta say it so it's yeah. it won't be it won't hurt your thing so yeah, yeah. he goes on there he goes the he goes this guy will make any sign for five dollars okay well right. instead of st doing a poop joke or something stupid he, he says he actually made a sign called death to all jews <laughs> it's like what <laughs> What, what are you doing? Well, he had a contract with Disney at that stage in the game and the Wall Street yeah. Journal ratted him out and, and the whole thing went to hell. Real real yeah. quick, though, by the way, the other thing on, on YouTube goes back to us is that we were doing very, very well on YouTube in terms of uh, relevant search results. We were just crushing. We were trending so fast that I was the only one paying attention to the scoreboard. Like in, back in 2015, we you typed in flat earth, all, well, relevant search results equaled, I think 50,000. By the middle of 2018, we were at 20.9 million, right? Ooh. Because people are, we, and there was a guy that worked for uh, Google that came out and they were asking him, it's like, why do things get recommended, right? Out of yeah. all the thousands of topics, he made one reference. And he goes, well, the average person that gets into um, flat earth watches 20 videos in a row, what do you think we're gonna recommend? Yeah, right? 100%. And, 100%. And you go in now, you, if you guys know anything about the internet, like search results, right? That's that's Internet 101, right? Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. in the middle of 2018, when we hit 20.9, uh, Donald Trump was at 20.8. And I was really excited. So I made a video called Flat Earth nice. Catches the President of the United States, right? Nice, and at that nice. point, there was only a couple of people ahead of us. Like, you know, reals, I'm not going to count PewDiePie. I'm people like Katy Perry and, and um, Taylor Swift and people like that. And... Two weeks later, somebody calls me up. They go, scoreboard's gone. I go, what? What are you talking about? I go, they, they stunt the numbers again? Did they change the filters? They go, no, man. Search results isn't there anymore. I go, for us? They go, for everybody. They pulled it. It's gone. And what? Yeah, you type, go into YouTube. Type in any topic you want. There is no search results anymore. It's just, oh. you know, you get your topics, but there's no, no search get, results equals a number. Video. Right. And, right. And people are saying, well, you're delusional if you think Flat Earth had anything to do with it. I go, really? <laughs> Because I was yeah. the only one that cared. <laughs> you know, I was the only I posted. I mean, I still have on my page. You know, I, I was tracking them because we were just crushing. We were like 12 million, 14 million, 17 million. It's like, yeah, Donald Trump. I thought we'd yeah. hit Donald Trump by Christmas. We caught him in the summer. <laughs> I was like, yeah. We're, and like, like when you type PewDiePie, for, for a perfect example, when you type PewDiePie in, he, come, he came in at about 5 million. Five million right. relevant search results because that's it's kind of like the viewer's choice thing. It's what people watch. What people it's like. Wow, I just you know people parrot the videos. Sorry. Anyway, what else? No, no, you're good, man. You're good. Um, I know we're just so we're just over about an hour and ten minutes yeah. now. You want to go another so 10, I know, I know, ten minutes and call it? Yeah, I just I just have a couple more things okay. I want to kind of want to wrap up with. Okay. Yeah. Um. So number one, one thing I wanted to mention was um on Joe Rogan's podcast. Um, there was Rogan. one, pod yeah, there was one podcast in particular. I think he, um, they kind of brought it up briefly, the flat earth. And I think he denounced it right away. Um, he always seems to have a guest on named Eddie Bravo. Yep. Who is a, I believe he is a flat earther. Am I he correct? Absolutely. Or am I he's a flat earther and Joe, yeah, one of he, Joe's best friends. Yeah. So I find that, I find that interesting because there's, he's definitely, he's got people on that completely denounce it and yet he's got friends that believe in it so it is interesting to see I, I will i will tell you really quick the joe rogan story joe rogan sure. is in a weird position and it's no coincidence by the way that he just landed that nine figure contract oh my god yeah yep. so awesome. he's one of the biggest podcasts in the world right people yep. forget that he was a conspiracy guy big conspiracy guy and he specialized yep. in nas nasa bashing Way before there was flat Earth, he went after the moon landings. Moon landings have been criticized in, even in our country basically since they happened. It's like, man, right. nothing makes sense up there. There's all these weird things. In fact, I'll even throw a photograph at you real quick. But yeah. he goes on and he has said many times, and something about debates comes down to conviction. And Joe Rogan had a lot of conviction. And he went up against scientists and he was winning. And he was inspiring yeah. people. And then all of a sudden he disappears for a year. Didn't do anything. And when he comes back, he's got a brand new show on a sci-fi channel called Joe Rogan Questions Everything. And in the very first That's episode, right. he recanted everything he ever said about NASA. 
literally oh. it was like a public apology it's like and ever since then he has never believed in a conspiracy well then we come along and we're just ripping it up and so joe's in this weird spot where he wants to condemn us but at the same time he, he he's playing both sides so he's got sure, he, yeah. so every guest he'll bring up he'll 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 egg him on also what do you think about that flat earth stuff they're crazy right you know he'll bring on neil degrasse tyson he'll bring on elon musk he'll bring on astronauts it's like what do you think of the flat earth stuff and then then every once in a while he'll bring eddie bravo on and eddie will be yep. freaking high <laughs> Uh, and and just start flying with it. So yeah, he loves it. Joe. Eddie loves it. Eddie's a big conspiracy theory. Do you guys? Do you, I'm sure you guys have had conversations. I haven't personally, the but there's been like a whole bunch of our guys uh, that that yeah. have talked to uh, talked to Eddie. Yeah. In fact, the, the, yeah. the last we were we, um, one of our guys, uh, David Weiss from uh, DITRH, he went on uh, Alex Jones show, and it was Alex Jones, nice. one of our guys, and Eddie Bravo, high as a kite, sitting next to Alex Jones to keep him in line. It was a brilliant interview. <laughs> I love Alex. It. What do you What do you think of Alex Jones? In 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 a in a in a nutshell, how about that? <laughs> in a nutshell, look, he's got a good act, and right. I mean, he's not taken very seriously in the conspiracy world because he's just so far over the top. Plus, oh, yeah. when it came out in the um, during his divorce trial a couple of years ago, uh, when it came out where he just went out to the judge and says, "Look." that whole rah, 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 that, that yeah. th when he basically said that was an act and everyone kind of knew that anyway i mean that was his persona so you take him somewhat seriously but at the same time not as much i mean he's he's not he's not as respect he gets a lot of attention would would our people do his show yeah you bet if i was asked to do a show would i do it yeah i would i would do joe rogan's yeah. show even though i'd be more, yeah. more nervous to do joe rogan's show because i said <laughs> bad yeah, things yeah. about him I feel like I feel like he would like I, I'm surprised he hasn't has he brought on any flat earthers besides Eddie Bravo? No, and the only time he was even thought about he was thinking about bringing Eric Dubay and um to do a debate against Neil Tyson, and he got Neil Tyson to go. I said, oh yeah, you know, gloss over. It's like yeah, we'll do a debate. Just call me in a couple months. We'll do it. It's like no, Neil doesn't do debates with anybody about anything, and so I knew it was going to fall apart. That was the only time he ever thought about bringing an actual. You know, one of our one of our hardcore people. I mean, Eddie Bravo was hardcore, no question. Um, yeah, yeah. So there, I mean, hell, we've got a celebrity list that's pretty impressive at, at this yeah. stage, both private and public. I've met celebrities that 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 can't even be outed because they don't want to because they're scared of like, yeah. well, what sure. like what happened to Kyrie Irving? Poor Kyrie oh, yeah, Irving. Absolutely, Kyrie Irving. Shaq, well, yeah. Shaq too, right? Well, Shaq lasted <laughs> ten days. And yeah. but I mean, get to remember, Shaq makes twenty million dollars a year in endorsements. I mean, if the Arizona Tea Company called up his agent and says, "Yeah, you really ought to have him back off of this flat Earth thing," what do you think he's going to do? But he yeah, was on yeah. board. Now, Kyrie, the only thing he apologized for, and he did it in the um, Forbes Thirty Under Thirty interview, he apologized to all the urban science teachers, <laughs> which I felt really right. bad because what was happening was these science teachers were like, "Oh yeah, it's a globe, right?" And all of a sudden, kid in the back, it's like, "Yeah." My man Kyrie, he makes ten million dollars a year. His guy's own shoe commercials, all this. He says it's flat. What do you yeah. got? <laughs> yeah, yeah, and yeah, yeah, and so he apologized to a lot of these guys. But no, he never ever backed off. He's still vice president of the Players Association. So good for him. Yeah. That's awesome. Has he has he attended any conferences? No, have... no. The conferences are tricky because they're they're hardcore. We do try to invite some people. But yeah. it's that fine line. Ninety percent of our members. In fact, here I'll send you one more video, really quick. Um, sure. There's a um, here. Here's a perfect example. There was a a guy, a gamer channel called As. This is your brain. And this is. He did a straw poll on Asmon Gold. Sorry, what was the gamer channel again? I'll show it to you. Okay. okay. It's this one right here. He did a. He's one of those guys like plays Warcraft and does stuff while he's playing Warcraft. And yeah, yeah. he did a, he, somebody in the chat says, oh yeah, the earth is flat. Go, oh, really? Okay, fine. Let's do it. Is the earth flat actually? And he was cranking out at least on 120, 130 votes a second, right? Right. At no point was flat earth losing. And he was really pissed off. In fact, I think we won 53, 47. And by yeah. the, by the time the thing was, was, was stabilized, but here's the thing. So, Wow, it's like wow, under eighteen group, we're scoring over fifty percent because of, you know in the eighteen yeah. to thirty fours, eighteen to twenty fours, eighteen to thirty four, twenty four, we were a full yeah. thirty something percent, and scientists were really upset. The problem is, is that's anonymously, 
So yeah, 50%, right? All these guys like, oh yeah, flat earth, right? You put them in a yeah. room and you have them raise their hand. Oh no, that'll go down to single digits <laughs> because everyone's a little nervous. Like you don't want... You, you, everyone's you, watching. Yeah, you like yeah. the flat earth as a topic, but you don't want to be called a flat earther. Sure. And that's what we run into with celebrities and high profile people. I mean, some don't care. Some are like, you know, right. Kyrie. It's like, yeah, what do I get to lose? I'm rich. I'm I'm super cool. But yeah. yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Now, um, to kind of go back to a couple, well, one one question that kind of sparked my interest in the uh, documentary. Sure. Do you still have the white Chrysler with the it's flat <laughs> license plate? I do. Good. I do have Good. that. I absolutely do. I, and that, I was really upset um, because I, got, I was the first one to get an it's flat license plate. And I yeah. had a banner like behind me with a blow up yeah. of that license plate for a year, right? A yeah. whole year. I'm sitting there. It's like, yeah, it's flat. It's flat. It's my license plate. It's my actual flat car. And then finally, some guy from Montana. And then it was like, you know, then all of a sudden, I think we have most of the states and at least half of the provinces up in your neck of the woods. That have that it's flat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a, there's, oh, there, well, it's in my trailer. If you watch the, um, uh, the, the channel trailer. If you go in yeah. more than like a minute, you'll see all the license plates. And I start off with Canada because it's C. And yeah, yeah. and in fact, yeah, the yeah. one I wanted was um, what's the what's the license plate you have? What's the province where they use an actual shape of a bear as a license plate? Um, I think it's Yukon. Is that Yukon? I can double check. You, you know right which now. one I'm I talking think... about, right? It's it's the yeah, most I unique Yukon. license plate. It's actually a shape of a walking bear, and it's like wow, that's really cool. That's the one I wanted. I never got it. Actually, it might hold on. It might be. But we got a lot of the others. I think. Hold on. I think it's uh, it's the Is Northwest Territory. That's it. Yeah. Northwest Territories. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I do. I still do have that car, and uh, I hardly drive it. So I'm not getting rid of it anytime soon. It's only got, it's only got like fifty thousand miles on it. What? No. When did you? How long have you had it? Fifteen years. And how the how the heck do you only have fifty thousand miles? Because on it? I was lucky when I was when I was doing my thing in Colorado, I didn't have to commute. Really, my I, there were people like commuting to, to Denver, like 30 something miles each way. And I was always yeah. working in Boulder and living in Boulder. So my commute, <laughs> even the long ones, maybe were six miles. And yeah. so I didn't have to I didn't have to. And in fact, sometimes it was close. Enough. In fact, there was one office that it, I would walk to work twice a week. And right. so it's like I just never I don't know. I, I, I wasn't really a car guy. So I yeah, never, yeah. nothing really. It's like, I, you know, I like car guys. They'll be like, oh, I really itching to get something new. And like, nope. Yeah. But as long, hey man, as long as you have that license plate, it doesn't matter what doesn't you drive. doesn't matter. Just, Absolutely. Yeah. I will transfer it. Awesome. So uh, sure. we just have two last things before yeah. we end this off. Okay. Thanks again for being patient yeah, with yeah, us. Yeah. We really appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. Um, and not to get too much into detail on this, yeah. but... If you could name any conspiracy theory right now that is really interesting you at this moment, what is one that you think people should check out? Other than Flat Earth? Yes, other than Flat Earth. <laughs> uh, wow, some, one of my favorites. Um, wow, I could pick a dark one. Yeah, let's do it. Okay, let's go dark. Um, yeah, because 9 11 is too easy. Uh, people have done that to death. Pearl Harbor, just about every American war. No, no, the, yep. the one you should look into because it, it's a regional one is would be Sandy Hook. That's that's okay. the one I would point people at. I that's that's the dark one. You want to go a fun one, look at the plesiosaur. You know, is the is Loch Ness is Loch Ness monster real? Well, if the coelacanth fish is real, then why isn't the Loch Ness monster real? It blows away carbon right. dating. Uh, Sandy Hook, real quick. Uh, th I am not making light of, of children dying, that whole thing. But there are three huge plot holes. And I'm a big media guy. I love plots and I love plot, you know, finding plot holes. Um, first one would be, I will pay $1,000 PayPal um, to the first person who shows me a 10 second video of a child being carried out of that building by a law enforcement officer. The whole, the whole operation was blown because the traffic copters got there right away, instantly. 600 kids in a, in a grade school. It would take forever to get them out of there. I mean, they would be taking them out under each arm. It would take them forever. The helicopters got there instantly, and it was like the whole thing was done. It was like, they're just flying around. What happened? What happened? Uh, second thing would be on that would be the, um, again, these things people should look into, um, would be the, uh, the perfect kill ratio. Never in the history of any shootings, war or domestic. Um, you know, you have dead and you have wounded, right? And you always know, you know, dead and wounded is always higher. There's only one incident in the history of anything that had a wounded of zero, and that was Sandy Hook. 
Well, that doesn't even make sense. The guy fired about 150 rounds. <clears throat> so you're saying that every 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 shot was absolutely fatal or absolutely missed? Okay, hit in the ankle, dead. Hit in the shoulder, dead. But the other 120 rounds went somewhere and didn't do anything. And then the last one would be the um. Uh oh, I'll even send you the clip for it. I'll I'll, I'll dump it in here as soon as I'm done, which is uh, Robbie Parker. The, the father, that's usually the most damning one. Robbie Parker smiling or laughing. You can look it up on, on YouTube. And that was, he did not know the pref, press conference was already live when he walked out of the school. And they walk, he's walking up to the podium laughing and smiling and joking with his buddies. And then he gets up to the podium. He thought that someone was going to cue him. And then he was, and they got into character, right? He's like, yeah, I'm really sad, you know? And it's like, what the hell was that leading up to the freaking podium, right? And okay. CNN, because it was so fast, CNN's producers couldn't get to him in time. So every repeat after that, they only showed him from the podium. But as you know, everything on the internet sticks. And so the recordings are out there. People recorded the whole thing. Yeah. And that just completely crushed it. It's like, your daughter died 24 hours ago. You shouldn't even have slept. <laughs> and what, you yeah. know, you look like you just had a shower and everything looks great. So yeah, mm -hmm. Sandy Hook, that's, that's a dark one that people should look at. Everything else, uh, let me end it with this. Because I don't, I don't want to make it sound like, you know, I'm a, I'm a tinfoil hat type of guy. Look, there are lots of deceptions out there in the world in just about everything that we can think of, business and politics and sports and entertainment and journalism and even science. We all know they're out there. We all, it's just a question of what we're willing to look at and what we're not. You know, Enron happened. Uh, uh, Harvey Weinstein happened. You know, Pe Tom Brady happened. <laughs> Lance Armstrong happened. Things like this yeah. happen. But so it's just a question of what you're willing to, to look at and what you're not. Um, the, the thing I like to give people with when I go away is it's like, look, trust everyone, but count your change. Right. You know, don't just take everything that you read in the news at face value. Understand why stories are done. You know, news media isn't just some objective journalism outpost. They are owned by a parent company. They're owned by a bigger company and they all have agendas. Sure. Stuff is stuff as light as oh three ounces of dark chocolate a week will help cure cancer. Well, who the hell came up with that study? Eggs are good for you. Eggs are bad for you, and so on and so on. And that's just the food. So again, yeah, right. do, do your own research and ask questions. Don't take anything I said as absolute truth. Figure it out for yeah. yourself. And I think most people will. There you go. Yeah, sweet. Okay, and then Mark, the last thing we're going to end on today is uh, what we've been doing in our last podcast is we do a would you rather. Oh yeah. Okay. Um, so it's, it's usually just a fun one, but for you, we've kind of made it a little interesting because we thought, hey, you're a flat earther. Let's let's make this interesting. Let's see what you're going to say. Okay. So to end this off, Mark, I'll give you a would you rather. So Mark, would you rather denounce flat earth completely and from this point on believe that the earth is round mm -hmm. and then the coronavirus is instantly cured around the world <laughs> or would you rather continue to believe in flat earth and instantly receive one hundred million dollars in your bank account for you to use. <laughs> That's kind of a loaded question. Um, okay, two two things. Well, I'll answer both of them actually. I mean, obviously. So wait, continue to promote flat Earth and become rich, or denounce yes. flat Earth and cure the virus. Cure, you cure the virus, but you have to you have to completely change your way of thinking, and you have to believe that the Earth is round. I oh, know I take I take the money and the, here's but not for the reason you might think no not not for the reason you might think because everybody in our community and a lot of Americans in general don't believe the hype when it comes to the virus is the virus real sure is the virus right. but but what we were sold <clears throat> isn't what was advertised and by that I mean right. look and I did a rant on this a couple of weeks ago um, which is real, I'll do it real fast for you which is a pandemic has to have a certain mortality rate. And if the gold standard is 1%, I mean, initially they were saying, oh, 3% for old people, 1% for everybody. And it's like, okay, 1% um, of the United States is 3.5 million people. All right, what's a tenth of a percent? Well, it's 350,000. Okay, what's a third of that? That's where we are now. A third of a right. tenth of a percent. Well, that's not what you sold us, but you shut down everything. I mean, there's a lot of people that I know that are not doing well <laughs> because of this. And right. including, you know, even I'm not, I, even I don't get to go any place. So yeah. for me, it's kind of a weird question because again, what, what virus are you talking about? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. The one that, the one that didn't do anything. They're just numbers on a screen. In fact, I'll, I'll, I'll leave you with a rant 
I'll put I'll paste the thing a rant I called it um, no tears for the shadow puppets which I did a couple weeks ago which is you know people the reason the reason why nobody we're resisting it here while we're doing like protests nobody's doing social distancing is because you hadn't didn't scare people enough if, if it was real right. pandemic you'd have everyone would know somebody in fact I'll, sorry let me end with this <laughs> on your cell phone I don't know how many friends you guys have on your cell phone you have contacts lists right right did anyone on your contact list die of the virus no no the, pro the problem is is that i have asked that question to a huge amount of people and nobody has so right. what are these numbers we're, we're seeing you know and even if you did even if you did find someone did it happen because of the virus or did it just happen they just tack it on did the guy have 20 years of lung cancer and he got the <laughs> virus mm. yeah. so anyway yeah. sorry no short version let's end it I'm taking the money. <laughs> no, okay. <laughs> nice. No, but, all right, all right. Honestly, yeah, and that was that was an awesome conversation. We just we just again, thank you for so much for, oh, for yeah. coming on, and, and we know that your time is valuable. And um, you know, regardless of you know what everyone believes, I think that it was a genuine conversation, and we just you know we, we love having conversations like this as well. So, oh, happy to do it. Uh, thanks, guys. Thank you. So um, yeah, and thanks again yeah. for doing once again. Thanks again for doing it on short notice. It was it was it was pretty yeah. cool. Appreciate cool. it. Cool. So, and I um, and I will plug in. I'll I'll drop two things in your box as soon as I'm done. Sure. One will be the link to my COVID rant, and the other thing will be the uh, the Robbie Parker clip. Okay. Sounds good. Right. Awesome. We'll check it out, man. Okay. Thank you so much. Thanks, guys. And, uh, to our listeners, thank you so much, and we'll uh, we'll uh, do another one soon. Thank you so much, Mark. Again. Long live flat Earth. <laughs> thanks, Mark.